I got to ask you, so in uh, one of your uh, recent posts, there's a section called Cluster Measuring Contest. So uh, There's another word there, but I won't say it, you know? <laughs> uh, what... Who's 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 got the biggest now, and who's going to have the biggest today? Individual largest is Elon, right? right. Um, Elon's cluster. Elon's cluster in Memphis, two hundred thousand GPUs, okay. right? Um, Meta has like one hundred twenty-eight thousand. OpenAI has one hundred thousand now. Now, to be clear, other companies have more GPUs than Elon. They just don't have them in one place, right? And for training, you want them tightly connected. There's some techniques that people are researching or, and working on that let you train across multiple regions, but for the most part, you want them all in like one area, right? So you can connect them highly with high-speed networking. Um, and so, you know, Elon today has 200,000 GP H100s and 100,000 H100s, 100,000 H200s, right? Um, Meta, OpenAI, uh, you know, and 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 Amazon all have on the scale of a hundred thousand, a little bit less. Um, but next this year, right? This year, people are building much more, right? Anthropic and Amazon are building a cluster of four hundred thousand Tranium two, which is Amazon specific chip, uh, get, trying to get away from Nvidia, right? Um, you know, uh, Meta and 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 OpenAI have scales for hundreds of thousands. But by next year, you'll have like five hundred thousand to seven hundred thousand GPU clusters. And and note those GPUs are much higher power consumption than existing ones. Right? Hopper seven hundred watts. Blackwell goes to twelve hundred watts. Right? So so the power per <laughs> chip is growing, and the number of chips is growing. Right? Nuts. Um, uh, you think you think Elon, Elon said he'll get to a million? You think that's actually feasible? Um, I mean, I, I I don't doubt Elon, right? Uh, the filings that he has for like, you know, the power plant and the Tesla battery packs, it's clear he has some crazy plans for Memphis, um, like permits and stuff is open record, right? Um, but it's not quite clear that, you know, what what and what the timescales are. Um, I just never doubt Elon, right? You know, that's he's going to surprise us. So what's the idea with these clusters? If you have a million GPUs, what percentage in, uh, let's say, two, three years is used for uh, training and what percent pre-training and what percent is used for like for the actual so, computation. So these mega clusters make no sense for inference, right? Uh, you could route inference there and just not train. Um, but most of the inference capacity is being, you know, hey, I've got a 30 megawatt data center here. I've got 50 megawatts here. I've got 100 here, whatever. I'll just throw inference in all of those because the mega clusters, right, multi-gigawatt data centers, I want to train there. Because that's where all of my GPUs are co-located, where I can put them at a super high networking speed connected together, right? Because that's what you need for training. Now, with pre-training, this is the old scale, right? You could you would increase parameters, you'd increase data, model gets better. Uh, that doesn't that doesn't apply anymore because there's not much more data in the pre-training side, right? Uh, yes, there's video and audio and image that has not been fully taken advantage of. So there's a lot more scaling, but a lot of people like like uh, have have transcript taken transcripts of YouTube videos, and that gets you a lot of the data. It doesn't get you all of the learning value out of the video and image data, but you know there, there's there's still scaling to be done on pre-training. Uh, but this post-training world is where all the flops are going to be spent, right? The model is going to play with itself. It's going to self-play. It's going to do verifiable tasks. It's going to do computer use in sandboxes. It might even do like simulated robotics things, right? Like all of these things are going to be environments where compute is spent in quote unquote post-training. But it, I think I think it's going to be good. We're going to we're going to drop the post from post-training. Yeah, it's going to be wow. pre-training and it's going to be training. I think the return uh, of the king <laughs> at some point um, because because for the like bulk of like the last few years, um, pre-training has dwarfed post-training. Mm -hmm. But with these verifiable methods, especially ones that scale really you know potentially infinitely, like computer use and robotics, not just math and coding, right? Where you can verify what's happening. Those infinitely verifiable tasks, it seems you can spend as much compute as you want on them. Especially with the context length increase, because at the end of pre-training is when you increase the context length for these models. And we've talked earlier in the conversation about how the context length, when you have a long input, is much easier to manage than output. And a lot of these post-training and reasoning techniques rely on a ton of sampling, and it's becoming increasingly long context. So there's just like your effectively your compute efficiency goes down. I don't the, I think flops is the standard for how you measure it, but with RL and you have to do all these things where you move your weights around in a different way than at pre-training and just generation. It's going to become less efficient and flops is going to be less of a useful term. And then as the infrastructure gets better, it's probably going to go back to flops.